to the final lesson in our astronomy series. Today we're going to have a look at the origin of the universe, the theories that there are for how the universe has began and what the universe is doing now, and the evidence that ties it all together. So by the end of this lesson, we're going to have been able to describe the differences between the steady state and Big Bang theories, describe the evidence supporting the Big Bang theory, and explain why the Big Bang theory is the currently accepted model. We're going to be able to compare those two models and explain about CMBR and how they account for redshift in the universe. So first of all, let's talk about the Big Bang theory and steady state theories. What are they? Well, the Big Bang Theory you might have heard of because the Big Bang Theory states that everything started from nothing and exploded out into the universe we know today with galaxies and stars and other things in between. And, and so the theory is that in time gone backwards, so this is time moving forwards, that there was a point where everything was close together and at that point when it exploded out what we call the singularity was the big bang steady state is slightly different so in steady state theory the universe has always existed So no beginning or end of time and mass uh, and is expanding. So still expanding, which is uh, agreeing with the evidence we have for the Big Bang Theory. And we'll talk about that in a moment. But it is creating mass as the universe expands. Now, we know that that doesn't really fit with our understanding of what's going on in the universe. But, you know, let, let's bear it in mind for the moment. So what's our evidence for the Big Bang Theory and the steady state theory for the fact that they're expanding? Well, we know from our previous video that if they're expanding, then everything should be redshifted. And that is true. We see redshift happening all the time. So both of them agree with that redshift evidence. What's the evidence for the Big Bang Theory, though? Well, it's something called the CMBR. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that as we go through this understanding of what's actually happening with the Big Bang Theory and with steady state theory. And it's going to require us to have a bit of a story. So let's begin the story by talking about these two people here. Their names are Penzias and Wilson. And Penzias and Wilson were the first people to start investigating microwaves from the universe and what was happening in the universe and how, where and how these microwaves are being produced. Now, they built this microwave antenna and what they found is that all the time they were using it, they turned it on, they would just get this static level of information that was being detected. And this was a real head scratcher for them. They didn't really know why and they didn't understand what was going on. So the rumour has it, or the story goes, that they went to the nearby place of Strathmore and they asked them, right, I don't want you to turn their microwaves on during the whole time we're, we're detecting our microwave or using our microwave detector, and went back to their um, detector, turn it on again, and they got the static again. So it wasn't that there was nearby interference, it must be something else. They went so far as to catch the mating pigeons that were living inside of the microwave, uh, what we call the horn, the detector, and released them. But they then had to... Um, scrape all the pigeon poo from inside of the microwave detector because they thought maybe that's what's causing these additional microwaves that we weren't expecting. And unfortunately, they still had the static. So the statement from Penzias is that when we first heard that inexplicable hum, we didn't understand its significance and we never dreamed it would be connected to the origins of the universe. 
It wasn't until we exhausted every possible explanation for the sound's origin that we realised we had stumbled upon something big. That's really important in terms of science because we always discover new ideas and things that are new and exciting, usually through um, through an accident. So this was an accidental discovery of something very important. And what they did was they did, as any good scientist would do, they took their results to conferences. They didn't really understand what was going on. So they took it to conferences and they shared it with the people at the conference. And they say, right, OK, so we've got this this background noise. We don't know what it is. We've done this. We've done this. We've done this. We stopped it from happening, but we still get the background noise. We don't understand it. And as fate would happen at this conference, there were some different scientists, one of which was Edwin Hubble, who we spoke about in the last video. Now, Edwin Hubble started to put two and two together, and he realised that actually what they were detecting was the energy from the beginning of the universe. So Hubble's idea is that this universe is expanding, we're in this kind of yellow frame in the middle. We started at the Big Bang, that central kind of star. And as it has, um, as time has gone past, the universe expanded and everything has moved away from each other. Remember, it's all like stretching of, of a big um, balloon and put the, put, the, uh, put the galaxies on the balloon, blow it up, and you'll see those galaxies move away from each other. That's the idea of this accelerating and stretching universe. And if we think about what must have happened right at the beginning, at the Big Bang, there must have been a massive release of energy. And that energy was probably released as gamma rays because we're talking the maximum amount of energy. And remember that energy is related to the frequency. So the most energy emitted would be the highest frequency. Now mapping this over time, what would have happened as the universe expanded, well hopefully you can see that the wavelength is stretching. So as time went on, this energy from the Big Bang has been stretched into different parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. So at the beginning of the universe, there was probably a lot of gamma rays around in the universe. And so we had a cosmic gamma ray background radiation. Over time, as these gamma rays were stretched because the universe is expanding, they became cosmic X-ray background radiation. So you'd have detected lots of x-rays in the universe. My favourite is the fact that at some point it must have gone into ultraviolet and then into visible. So there must have been a cosmic visible background radiation. I like to think about that one because it argues that you would have looked up into the sky and the sky would have just been on fire fire. There would have been all of these visible uh, light rays, what we call photons as we go to higher level physics, but these um, light rays and photons being all around the universe and all you would have seen was these bright colours in the sky. But we've gone past that and we're now into the microwave regime and we're in the cosmic microwave background radiation, the CMBR, and that's a really important bit of evidence for the Big Bang Theory. So the CMBR is the microwaves that have stretched due to um, the, the stretching of the universe from, in fact it's a redshift isn't it, from this idea of gamma rays being emitted at the point where the universe starts to this point where we're now in the microwaves. And what would be the next step? Well the next step as the universe continues to expand would in fact be the cosmic radio background radiation. And the waves would get so big that they enter the radio regime. But remember that the electromagnetic spectrum is a continuum. And all we're doing is changing the wavelength or changing the frequency to go from one to the other. So what we can say is that the static that they were detecting is in fact the remnants of the energy that was left from the Big Bang itself. And this is the same as the static you might see on an old television. That static is literally the remnants of the Big Bang. Or the static you might hear on an analogue radio is the remnants of the Big Bang. That kind of crackle you hear when you're not tuned in. That's what you're listening to. You're listening to the start of the universe. 
Well, so they use that microwave antenna, and as it says here on the plaque, with this large horn antenna, Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson discovered the cosmic background radiation in 1964. This unexpected discovery, the first evidence that the universe began with the Big Bang, ushered in experimental cosmology. In other words, it was a very important step to us understanding the universe. And we've been interested in this background microwave radiation ever since. And in fact, we sent up a satellite called COBE, C-O-B-E, which was looking into the background radiation. And it developed a map of the universe. And scientists were very interested to see whether there was any structure, whether we could see any specific areas where these microwaves were coming from, or whether they really were just randomly distributed across the sky. And in fact, here is the picture. Here's the map of the universe from that COBE satellite. And there are spots where there's quite high amounts of, of radiation, which is where the reds and yellows are. And the spots are very low, which is where the blues are. But actually, there's no structure in this. It's pretty much random. There's no uh, reason where this microwaves come from. So it's more evidence that the CMBR proves that the Big Bang was what happened or is a model that explains it. So what could possibly happen to the universe in the future? Well, we've got four different options. Now, this don't have to know this for your GCSEs, but I think it's really important to kind of finish off this topic on astronomy. We could have a situation where the universe is going to reach a maximum. The gravitational forces, which become quite complicated when we're talking over such big sizes, become or are big enough still to start the universe collapsing back in. So we would have a decelerating universe coming back into what we call a gigantic crunch or the big crunch. So we go from the Big Bang, we're about a third, nearly halfway through, and we'd end up with a big crunch at the end. So that's the first option looking over here. OK, so the second one is this one here. In this case, the universe is expanding and it starts to slow down its expansion. But in fact, we'll keep going for the end of time and the universe will just get bigger and bigger and bigger. And all of the matter inside the universe will just spread out more and more and more. And all the energy will be spread out more and more and more. We've got the third one here, which is the coasting universe. That's the idea where we're not going to change the amount of acceleration the universe has. It's going to keep expanding in the same way all the way to the future. And the universe will just get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And finally, we have the accelerating universe, which means that it's going to expand at a greater rate as we move into time. And again, we'll get to this point where the universe will keep expanding and all the mass and energy will just get further and further away. And in fact, we call these three options the cold, dark death to the universe because there won't be any stars. The energy will be spread out so far. There won't really be any mass. It will just all be spread out because it doesn't have a high enough density. I think my theory, I think that the one I like the idea of is this idea of a Big Bang to a big crunch. And when you have a big crunch, the idea you're going to have another big bang again and a big crunch and a big bang. And every time it does this, you're going to have different physics coming out of it and another universe and it's going to work in a different way. And there'd be an infinite amount of times in the past and an infinite amount of times in the future that this can happen where the universe expands and then crunches. But we'd never know because at the point of the big bang, we've got no idea what happened before. At the point of the big crunch, we've got no idea what's going to happen next. So therefore, we'll never know if we're in this situation or we're just in any of the other situations that we've talked about previously. But I like this idea personally. OK, so let's just go through what we've covered today. We've described the idea of the steady state and the Big Bang theories. Remembering the Big Bang is this idea of an explosion and the universe expanding over time. And the steady state is the idea that the universe always existed, but is still expanding. And as it expands in the steady state, mass is being created. But in the Big Bang theory, the mass was always there. We cannot create mass. Well, that's a slight exaggeration because there is uh, this little equation called E equals mc squared. But we'll not go into that until you get to A level. 
we have described the evidence that supports both of them. And in fact, the Big Bang and the steady state both are expanding. So that is proved by the fact that things are redshifted. Remember in the last video, we talked about the fact that every single galaxy is moving away from us. So therefore they are all redshifted, which means the whole universe is expanding. But the only evidence that proves the Big Bang theory is true is the cosmic microwave background radiation. This remnant of energy that has expanded from gamma rays to microwaves over time as the universe has expanded. We've explained why the Big Bang Theory is the currently acceptable model and it's the only accepted model because of the CMBR. There's no other reason for the CMBR and the CMBR does not fit with the steady state theory. There's no reason for it to fit. So we can compare those two models and we can argue which one is correct and we can use our evidence to explain it. And finally, we've talked about how both theories account for redshift. And that is because, as I've said, both examples, both models here use the idea of expansion. So that's our last lesson in this um, astronomy topic. Uh, I hope you found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. If you have enjoyed this and you want to watch more, then please press the subscribe button. And I look forward to seeing you for the next video.